Good evening. I'm Amber Marshall. I'm Sean Johnston. And I'm Michelle Morgan. We're here in the Heartland living room, just wrapped up filming four months of season 14 of Heartland. Now, as you can imagine, making Heartland this year was not business as usual. We had a few struggles, but we also had a great number of beautiful and magical moments. We did. And now that we're done filming for the year, we're looking forward to ringing in 2021 and spending some time with our own families. Now, every year, we open up our set to invite fans to come and see the magic of behind the scenes filming on Heartland. This year, of course, that's not a possibility. So we decided to create a very special moment for all of you to witness virtually. Do you know what it is we're doing, Sean? No. So it's virtual, so it's a fan day, but fans from around the world can tune in from the safety of their own home and see behind the scenes of what we're doing here today. Do you get it? Sure. <laughs> So I think this is an incredible opportunity to be able to show what it is we do here on Heartland and share it with all of you from around the world. Now I know that everyone is excited to have a first glimpse of our 14th season of Heartland, which will be airing on CBC January 10th. So let's have a look at the trailer for this year. Did Daddy make you breakfast? You're a lucky girl. I made you some tea. Thanks. Well, I better get going. I love you, Ty. I love you, too. I saw that quote yesterday morning. Mind me asking you why you let that guy go? Because I thought you were doing some great things with him. Fire spreading faster. You better stay on this. We can come back from anything if we have our most valuable resources intact. You, the people of Hudson. I've been torn up. I've been beat down. I've had a great run, and all good things come to an end, right? Of course, needed help. He needed help from you, from a specialist. Why can't you understand that need in people when you can see it so well in horses? And I know the dark. What am I supposed to do? I don't know. I thought the hero always finds a way to save the day. There's something better coming. There's something better coming. There's something better coming. I just want everything to be back the way it was. Amy, I can't promise that's going to stop. What I can tell you is pretty soon those dreams and memories won't haunt you anymore. They'll bring you comfort. And whatever is keeping you up at night right now, that'll feel like a warm blanket. You're not alone, Amy. You'll never be alone. There's something better coming up. There is no question this has been a very different year, and with so many restrictions in place, we have all had to adjust. But I think we can look back fondly on previous years and the times that we have shared with fans that come to our fan days. Michelle, do you have any special stories that stick out in your mind? Of course. Uh, last year, in season 13, we did a really fun fan day at the Millerville Racetrack. Do you remember how many fans we had that day? It was 900. About 900 fans came. And it was special for me in particular because my daughter Mara came to set that day and was actually helping register all the extras and the fans as they came in. So she felt like she was part of my work and what I do. So that made it really special. It was also the episode where Lou announces her run for mayor. And so it was fun for the fans because they got a little sneak peek glimpse of what was happening that season before anyone else. My name is Lou Fleming. Many of you know me as the woman who pours your coffee down at Maggie's. Hundreds and hundreds of people there. It just, the energy that they create to make our jobs feel bigger and better. It feels like, you know, they're expected or asked to at least uh, to 
participate as characters in the story too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we're doing our thing on the actual filming in the filming area, uh, they're responding like uh, Heartland is real. <laughs> it is. Well, and they're usually playing a crowd, so it's often, you know, applauding or booing or, or they get to react yeah. and be part of the scene and they always do an amazing job. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, they, uh, they really put their, their commitment into it and, uh, you know, they, they love being there and it's obvious and, and uh, I love you being the <laughs> Miss the MC. The mayor of Fan Day. Yeah, you're the mayor of Fan Day. I love that. And this is the Hudson Heritage Rodeo. So this is cool, right? And yeah, so you guys are just excited to be here, which I'm sure you are. So that's not hard acting. That's a role that I just kind of took on because I thought, you know, all of these fans have come here and they appreciate the show so much, but when we have a typical filming day, we're so busy most of the time getting ready and everybody has their roles to do, no matter what their job is on the show. And I think for me, I thought, I wanna be that person that can explain all of that to the fans because a lot of people will watch what we're doing and say, what the heck is going on? You know, what are all these people that are carrying lights and they're setting up the camera here and then they're setting up all of this track on the ground and there's a camera that slides along and is and filming everything. And they're doing everything. it again and again. And again, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so I thought if I can be that person that is able to communicate between the crew and the cast and the fans and be able to bring it all together so that the fans of the show can really appreciate what it is we do and what they see in the final product. Yeah, and they the certainly, Heartland. they certainly go home after fan day going ah I get it what a great experience that was I hope they <laughs> think that but uh, that was so informative it was so uh, I feel like I was part of making film I feel totally. like an actor and then when they watch the episode there's that pride that they can feel that they can see themselves and uh, and just know that they were a part of making her so speaking of making Heartland, I have a photo shoot to get to. I have to go join Spartan, who's played by Stormy, and we're gonna take some photos. So I'm gonna head off now. Perfect, and I actually have a treat for you guys, so I will meet you on the porch. Okay. I'm just gonna look up the word virtual. Okay. I hope you guys are ready for a set tour because I'm going to show you around this entire set so you can see where all the magic happens when we're indoors and we're not out at the real ranch setting. So this, of course, is the Heartland House. This is our porch. We will occasionally shoot scenes on this porch rather than the real porch. Usually we're at the real porch, but sometimes in a pinch, we can light this, or our director of photography can light this and make it look like we're outdoors. Um, a funny thing is the actors often have to stand right here. You've seen a million scenes where we enter the kitchen from outside. We are always standing right here on this porch. Um, and the funny part is sometimes we're supposed to be in winter settings and really cold and we're all bundled up. They have a million lights here, so it's hot, we're melting, but we have to go inside kind of going like, it's cold, and we all go in this door and we're all standing here filing in, so this is where we stand before we go into the kitchen set. Behind me, over here, you'll see all our beautiful backdrops. Right now, of course, it's a winter setting full of snow, but we also have spring backdrops and summer backdrops with grass fields and dandelions everywhere. So the art department works really hard to make sure everything is authentic and to make sure everything is working for the seasons, including greens. When we're shooting here in the summer, the greens department will have all kinds of grasses and trees and things like that set up so that when we look out the windows inside, you really feel like you're at the ranch. So come on and I'm gonna show you inside. Ready to see Jack's room? We never film in this set. He's got a tiny room. Look, this is his whole room. I think he must have a single bed that would fit right here. We never actually film in here. We only see just a little slice of the room right here. There's a little inside joke that Jack doesn't really get a double bed. He sleeps on a little cot or something. <laughs> this, of course, is our beautiful living room, the fireplace. We've got it set up today for our fan day. So as you know, the couch faces that way, but we've moved things around for today. 
This is our beautiful fireplace with all the stones that we've used over the years and the naming ceremonies. Um, I can't remember which one is my stone. I always get it confused. I need Amber here because she corrects me and tells me which one is the right stone. One of my favorite things about this house and this set is all the beautiful um, art department and uh, set decoration, um, all these antiques. They really give a richness to you know the set and the backdrop when we're filming these scenes, all the color and just you really feel this like authentic feeling of being in a home. Like even like Jack's fly tying table is actually has like accurate fly tying tools and just little things that really I think give a richness to it. This is Jack's chair. Um, I'm directing this block and uh, I'm doing a scene here and one of the first things I wrote down was like Jack has to sit in his chair because you know, there's just ways we do things in this house. So now I'm going to show you over here our bedrooms. But first, the bathroom. This is the iconic bathroom where Sugarfoot kicked the door open when Lou was in the shower and she saw Sugarfoot. Do you remember? That was one of my favorite scenes from this whole series. And another one of my favorite scenes is Lou, Georgie, and um, Amy standing in the mirror brushing her teeth. Do you remember that scene? And it's a running joke in this house that it's a house full of people and we all share one bathroom. Be pretty tough. Uh, this hallway I find really beautiful too. We often have to stand in this hallway before we do scenes in the kitchen where we enter from the hall. I don't think you often get to see it, but you know, there's a beautiful portrait of Jack's wife, Lindy, and sometimes there's old photos of, of us. Like I think this is actually uh, Sean's dad. Here we've got Lindy's room. This room has been everybody's room over the years. I think it started out as Marion's room and then it became Tim's room and, and now of course it's little baby Lindy and Katie's bedroom. So this is the kid room. They get the biggest room in the house. Here's Lou's room, or the blue room as I call it. Um, a running joke with the wardrobe department is that, with, think about all of Lou's clothes you've seen over the years, like I barely wear anything twice on this show, probably have like 20 pairs of boots. Lou fits it all in this teeny tiny little <laughs> wardrobe. Somehow she manages to fit it all in here. This is a little joke we have. But I love Lou's room. I always feel really, it's really easy as an actor to just sort of sink in and feel like you're at home. And of course, it, this has been my room as Lou for 14 seasons. So it feels, I, I'm attached to it. And then of course, there's Amy's room. Here's Amy's desk when uh, we started the show and she was in high school and she used to do her homework. I don't think Amy uses this desk anymore. <laughs> there's a photo of Lou and Amy. And she's still got her old CD player. But I love the color of this room. And then over here, there's some great photos I'll show you. Because I don't think you often get to see these when you're watching the scenes, but as actors in the room, little things like here's a great photo with um, Cindy Busby and Jessica Amley, who were on the show for many, many years, and they're beloved to all of us. And then this photo is so funny. It's actually um, Amber and I at the Calgary Stampede in season one of the show. It was a candid photo. I think Graham or maybe Cindy took the photo of us and they, they thought it was great for art decoration. But look at us, we're like little babies. Nice little wedding photo. So now, my favorite part, I'm gonna show you guys Lou's office this year, which is a new set that I'm super excited about because of course Lou's the mayor. So Lou gets an amazing office this year. So follow me. This is the hallway outside of Lou's office, and welcome to my office. Mayor Lou Fleming at your service. 
so this is my amazing office. I love this set. Um, the new character on the show, Rick, and I, uh, played by Aiden Moreno, have had a lot of fun in this set. And I just, I love it. You know, this chair helps me really feel like a mayor. <laughs> One of the things that I think is, is quite funny is that we often have Lou working on paperwork. Um, and I think that's because it's more visual to see someone like flipping through paper. But in this day and age, I would probably just have a laptop on this desk and everything would be digital. But in film, it's a visual medium and it's not that interesting just to see someone typing on a computer. So of course, Lou still has stacks and stacks of paperwork. Although it is Hudson, so who knows? Maybe they're still just doing everything on paper. <laughs> so that was my amazing mayor's office. But now uh, we're going to go and say hi to some of the cast and crew and see what they're doing. And because we're being extra careful during this time, I'm just going to put my mask on and we'll go and see what everyone's up to. So over here, Amber and Spartan are getting their photo taken. Every year we do a gallery shoot where we do new photos for the poster, for the website. And uh, it's fun to see a horse like Spartan being photographed. So let's go check it out. Oh, look. Isn't that beautiful? And it's tricky when you're shooting a horse, because as you know, you want to get their ears forward. You want them to be relaxed. It's hard to get a horse to just stand and have their photo taken for a long period of time, but they figured out some tricks over the years. I don't know if they have it. OK, let's go outside. I'll show you what's happening out at the circus. This is the uh, Alberta weather coming in. So come on into my trailer, guys. Welcome to my trailer. Uh, what I like about my trailer best is I have a cozy little fire for a cold winter's day. And yeah, I mean, this is home for when I'm not on set. Personally, I like to just sit here, practice my lines, think about the scenes for the day, get my head around it, and um, sometimes even catch a little nap. We often get picked up for work at like 4.30 or 5 in the morning, so it's a long day. Um, but I love it, and um, I'm so happy to get to share this with you guys because it's probably the best thing that's happened to me in my life, getting to play Lou and getting to be on Heartland and share it with all of you. So now, a real treat for you guys, you get to go into the barn where I think Sean and Amber are waiting for you to introduce you to the horses. Well, thanks, Michelle, for that awesome tour of the studio. Now, this is a place that I think most Heartland fans know very well. And of course, Heartland wouldn't be Heartland without the horses. Now, Sean, you've been playing Jack just as long as I've been playing Amy. Yeah. And we both know that the connection with horses is really what Heartland fans love. So I thought it's very important to introduce some of the stars of the show. <laughs> His character name is Buddy, but uh, at home we call him Bullseye. And uh, Bullseye is about 12 years old, I think. And, uh, you know, they looked at a lot of different horses to, uh, to be Jack's horse. We needed somebody that was uh, going to be really striking in his appearance and something tall enough for Jack. Jack's a big man. And also uh, a horse that is extremely strong. And uh, Bullseye here, he's got a beautiful body. He's well muscled and... Uh, Bullseye is a roping horse in his real life. And uh, now he's getting the royal treatment here on Heartland, so he might be turning into a bit of an actor. Uh, one of the things that we love about Bullseye is he's got lots of personality, and at times he's kind of hard to handle. And I love that personally as uh, the guy that rides him. Uh, we have the world-class Wranglers on Heartland, and they, they keep him tuned up for me, but uh, every once in a while I have to, I have to give him a tighter rein than, than he wants maybe sometimes, but uh, you know what, he's a hero in my mind and uh, the journey that Jack took to become best friends with Buddy, uh, it was a beautiful story, we, you might remember that story where uh, Jack was reluctant to really take on a new friend. and. Uh, and they had a bit of a join up and uh, 
It was a beautiful moment in storytelling on Heartland, but it was a beautiful moment for me to play that moment with, with Bullseye here. And I think above all, horses on Heartland, they have to be kind. You know, we have a lot of scenes where we're emotional and we're, we're working with them in such close quarters with a camera crew and other actors. And I think Bullseye, he fits that role so perfectly. He's gentle, he's kind, but as you said, he's also strong and can carry many different roles. Now, a horse that, of course, many of you have known very well over the years is a horse that I've formed quite a bond with myself. And that, of course, is Stormy and he plays Spartan. So let's go over and meet the famous guy of the hour. What's she doing? She's trying to get that horse to join up. Get, get, get. Now this is a horse that needs no introduction. For those of you who have been following Heartland for the last 14 seasons, this of course is Stormy. Now Stormy has played Spartan since season one, so he has been here just as long as I have. And you can tell now, you know, he, he knows his job very well. He's very good at just hanging out in a stall and being calm and quiet. Now, in real life, Stormy started to develop arthritis, which isn't all that uncommon. But in the story, we wanted to echo that, and we wanted to show that that does happen. And so Spartan and Amy went through a full season of her trying to you know, come to terms with that and realize that her best friend is you know, maybe not going to be able to do the things that he used to do. So we were able to introduce a new character in the show and show that Stormy, who's falling asleep as we talk, could be the mentor to that horse. So there's been some incredible journeys between Amy and Spartan and of course with her new colt that we will meet a lot more of. Speaking of fans and their connection to you know, our horses and uh, the characters' horses and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we have so many fans around the world that uh, have enjoyed watching Heartland over these seasons and uh, they've connected with the show in a variety of different ways. And now we have an opportunity to uh, speak with some of them. So uh, what do you say we go over to the living room and we'll do that now? I think that's a great idea. <laughs> See you later, Stormy. <laughs> How are the horses, guys? It was good. Sean shared some nice stories. We had some bonding moments, I think. <laughs> awesome. Well, now we've gotten to the really fun part of our virtual fan day. We received thousands of questions no from fans around the world. And uh, we've chosen just some of them because we can't answer all of them. But we've got <laughs> quite a list here. Sarah from Gravenhurst, Ontario asks, what is your most memorable episode? Sean? I don't want to start the whole thing with such a downer, but <laughs> for me, when Jack lost his uh, best friend, Paint, mm. that was a real, that was a tough one to make, and it was even harder to watch for me. Yeah, it was a beautiful episode, and I think that's one of the things Heartland fans really resonate with on the show is, you know, dealing with tragedy and yeah. and the loss of a, of a friend because I mean there's a lot of I think children who watch the show and it's a good opportunity for parents to be able to explain these things to them and yeah. that was an episode that it really brought the Heartland family together too. It did I know. It's a good point and it's a good example of how our show is often really light and we have problems that we solve easily but we also deal with some pretty hard things like yeah. losing a horse, losing... Losing Amy and Lou's losing mother. Losing our mother, you know, like, <laughs> yes. divorce. Like, we deal with some pretty serious issues, but in a way that we can share with children and in a way that we can share with a family. Mm -hmm. moments on Heartland are always when I'm working with the horses so those usually prove to be my favorite episodes is when there's a very powerful horse story. Mm. I loved season five because I was able to go on a journey with Spartan into the Liberty world yeah. and for me that was so much fun because yeah. I was able to go down that journey in real life too and I was able to work with the horses to be able to do most of that stuff myself and when we filmed the very last episode in season five where Amy was doing the dark 
Dark Horse audition, and all of you were there. Yeah. Mm. And it was special for me because I had spent the whole season learning how to work Liberty with the Spartan Horse, and then I was able to showcase that in that episode. And I almost felt like I, Amber, was showcasing my talents to you guys. Yeah, I know. But then in the story, my character <laughs> was sharing that with the Heartland family. I've said this before, but I, I have so many amazing memories. Um, but one of the ones that impacted me the most personally was when we did a, a, um, a cattle herding episode. Because I'd never herded cattle. I was just getting comfortable on a horse, really, in season three. I wasn't a big rider before. And uh, I'd learned a lot over the seasons and practicing. But there was something about being on a horse and actually like you know, swinging your reins and calling to the cows. And we had quite a few cows there. I, in my memory, it was like 100 head a cow. Oh, a couple think, probably. Right, couple maybe more. Head, yeah. We had a yeah. lot. And that they was would, a big cattle guy, for there sure. There was a big cattle drive, and they would actually listen, and we herded them into Hudson. And I felt like I was actually doing something because I was actually herding the cattle. And I had so much fun filming <laughs> that episode. So here, all three of us just spoke of our favorite Heartland moments involving horses. Right? So I think mm. that we're all on the right show. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's true. It's true. So um, that leads into our next question from Brooke. Brooke is from Ireland. And she said, when you first started filming Heartland, did any of you think how big the show would become? Again. Mm -hmm. uh, no. Um, well, I'll just I'll just say this. I remember when we made the pilot episode. I was warning everybody not to get too excited because it's tough to sell a pilot, and most pilots do not go to series. And I said, "Don't break your own hearts, everybody." Everybody's younger than me, and I feel like the old wise guy, right? And I'm saying, "Don't break your own hearts. Just." Do the best you can, and we'll see where it goes. And 14 years later. I know, I know. <laughs> Who's the goat, right? <laughs> I have to say, I did not know anything about really Western culture when I started on the show. I really didn't. I, I didn't know that Western culture was so alive and well. So coming to do this show was like a huge, like I just felt like a fish out of water, which worked for Lou in a way. Mm -hmm. um, I had no idea, but there did feel like there was something um, unique. Like it felt like we were doing something that really clicked and mm -hmm. worked. Mm -hmm. And so I wouldn't, I wasn't surprised we got picked up. I wasn't surprised we got renewed for season one, two, and three. Did I think we'd go 14 seasons? No way. <laughs> no way. I, I actually, I had more of a like four year, I thought maybe three or four seasons. Mm -hmm. And I was the same as you. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this show is so much fun. I really love being a part of it. But thinking of the longevity of the show, I gave it around three years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have Annabelle from Guelph, Ontario. And she wants to know, do you like the way your character has changed over the years on Heartland? Is there anything you would change or not change about your character's growth? Ooh, that's a good one. Uh-huh. Well, I'll just keep this short and sweet. I love that Jack doesn't change. <laughs> he oh. <laughs> I think for myself, one of the things I love about like Heartland is the fact that our characters yeah, are allowed us. to grow and yeah. change. There's a lot of series out there where the characters are trapped in a certain time frame, like they're in high school or they're in, you know, this certain place where they're not allowed to age and grow and mature. Mm. And one thing that's so nice about a long running series is the adaptability of our characters and us as actors being able to take those characters down different right, journeys right. and allow them to grow and mature. And I think that's one of the most um, inspiring things for us is to be able to say, okay, so how is my character going to grow? And what can I bring new to this season? Yeah, that's a good point. If we had only gone three or four seasons, that would have been one thing, but we've actually been able to see Amy go from a teenager mm -hmm. to a woman, a mother. Mm -hmm. Um, and same with Lou, like a young woman to a parent and, and a wife and a businesswoman and now a mayor. Like we've been able to see, yeah, I know. we've been able to see us like go through a life. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is so unique. Mm -hmm. um, Lou has definitely, ch well she hasn't changed. She's changed and she hasn't changed, right? Mm -hmm. She's, I think she's gone through so many different phases and seasons of her mm -hmm. life. And mm -hmm. I, when I go back and watch past episodes, I'm like, wow. 
I used to wear a lot of tight clothes or like, <laughs> wow, I used to <laughs> wear a lot so of dangly earrings. Eyes. I will say one thing just visually that's changed. When I first started on the show, season one, I was fresh out of Toronto. I wanted all my wardrobe to be like black and mm -hmm. kind of muted colors. and Which that's... worked because you had just come from New York. Sure, it totally worked. But then I remember by season three, I was like, can I try on that rhinestone purse? <laughs> 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 like suddenly I'd spend enough time in Alberta that I was like, I, I think I'm okay with that. Let's just keep the rhinestones on that purse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and going through over a decade, yeah. you see a lot of different fashion trends just oh, in yeah. the world, in the right? Show, yeah. So it's like we get to showcase that. It's almost like this glimpse back in time when we do watch previous episodes because we do get to see that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gabrielle from Brazil. Hola. Que tal? Who is the member of the cast most similar to his or her character? Amber. Amber. <laughs> Done. Uh, Sorry, Gabriel, that's like a really easy question. Amber <laughs> lives and breathes her part. She is Amy. I love it though, because I feel like I have been more like my character over the years, and my character has become more like myself over mm. the years. I'll if buy that's, that. You know, I'll buy like that, when I sure. when I first came out to Alberta, yes, I was a horse girl. I've had horses ever since I was a kid, and I loved the Western culture. And I didn't feel like a fish out of water. I felt the second I landed in Alberta, I felt like this was my home. <laughs> and so, to me, I just embraced that. But I feel like over the years, I have become more Westernized, mm -hmm. and so a little bit of Amber was left in Ontario, and I think that in Amy, you know, a little bit of Amber has been put in there as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I buy that. Oh, for sure. Oh. I don't think we'd be here 14 years later if Amber was in our league. No, I'm serious. I'm dead serious. I think, of course, everyone on the show is really important, but we would not all be here now if, if, yeah. if it wasn't Amber. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so on to our next question. <laughs> Um, Charlotte from England asks, did any of you have experience with horses before you worked on Heartland, uh, as everyone seems to be complete naturals? Wow. Well, I grew up in uh, Alberta. I grew up in a uh, town in central Alberta, which is about two hours north of where we film. And I was a farm kid. I'm not really a cowboy kid. I uh, wasn't really a ranch kid. I was a farm kid. And we always had horses. So. Um, I'm not unfamiliar with this world, and to be honest with you, I would call myself half a cowboy. I wouldn't insult the world-class wranglers that we have on Heartland by calling myself a cowboy. You can do that, but I can't call myself one. But I'm pretty good, and I know cattle, and I know uh, I know horses, and uh, so. I mean, I do but, feel lucky that my grandfather was a rancher, so I'd ridden horses when I would go to Chile and a little bit, but I think my, my goal is to just try to make it as natural as possible. So when if we ever do cut to uh, a stunt person, who sometimes we have stunt people, if, I, if we're like going really fast on the horse or of course any jumping, I just want those transitions to look good. And the fact that you say we look like naturals for me is, is great, it means I'm doing okay. <laughs> and I love, I love riding now and I, I feel comfortable on horses, but it's been a big learning curve for me. And I think for me, I'm more comfortable on a horse than my own two feet. So landing on Heartland, being able to uh, start day one on a horse and say my lines. And uh, jump. And, and, <laughs> and all those things. Yeah, mm. uh, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, well, and it was. And it we was, were all going, wow, she can actually do that. Mm -hmm. And it was a lot of fun for me because being on a show, you know, a new group of people, a new place, I'd never been to Alberta before. So everything was new to me and I found comfort in the horses. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's the opposite. Actors show up on set and they are great in one-on-one -on -one scenes in the kitchen or the dining room or the living room, but then as soon as they step out onto the ranch, they all of a sudden feel too outside of their comfort zone and it makes them nervous, which I understand. But for me, it was the exact opposite. And I remember coming to set and just finding that comfort in the horses and be able to let go of all my stress, all my nerves, mm -hmm. and put my energy into the horses and that that really I think is what solidified this job for me was just that it was like this is perfect I can't imagine a better job I've been around horses since I was a little kid I've been riding since I was four um, and this just felt like home to me yeah. nice Lisa from Germany asks in which way are you most similar and or different from the character you play on the show uh, I would like to say that um, my goal in life may be to be like Jack because uh, 
he brings for me a lot of uh, terrific uh, characteristics that I really admire in the character and I think uh, it's given me a, a goal to strive for as I, uh, you know, enter the winter of my own life. Aww, it's very poetic. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I think uh, Jack is, he's the rock of Heartland. And uh, I almost feel like, uh, I do feel like in a way that that's you for us. Oh, for sure. Sean and is the rock of, this, of our <laughs> cast. And so that similarity definitely is present. In, and we notice it when we're in big group scenes together, like dinner scenes. We all love dinner scenes because we sit around the table and we feel like a real family. And that's when we get to chat and catch yeah, up. Yeah, and... And, it, and it feels like we are present in the Heartland house as this family of, of people that really care about each other. Mm -hmm. And Sean was the one who made me feel welcome. I, I showed up on a red-eye flight from Toronto to do the pilot and I was really nervous. I hadn't met anyone. I stepped up into the hair and makeup trailer and Sean said, there's our Lou. And Aww. I just, it melted my heart. I'm gonna cry, really. <laughs> but I was like, I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, this is a safe place. So. Yeah. Okay, so Felicity from Scarborough, Ontario asks, is Heartland a set or is it an actual house? Well, you tell me. Danica from Vernon, BC asks, What's it like to film Heartland in the winter season? Are you in the studio more often versus being outside? Uh, no, uh, we have uh, filmed many seasons into the winter and uh, we're not uh, necessarily in the studio more. Uh, when it comes to making Heartland, it is what it is and it's as real as it gets and sometimes our, <laughs> our crew, they, they suffer. Lane from Hamilton, Ontario asks, what do you do when you aren't filming a scene but are still on set? Um, in a normal year, we like to spend a lot of time together with the other cast and crew. We're all friends, we feel like family. This year it's been a little bit different and we have to sort of keep to ourselves more. Avery from Kentucky asks, how do you get the horses to act? Like they're sick, agitated, frightened. How do you get them to stomp, paw, snort, lunge, buck on cue, all of these <laughs> things. We have very talented horses on Heartland, but we also have a very talented team of wranglers who prep for all of these things. So certain ideas, like when Spartan's sick and laying down in a stall, we bring in a specific horse that is trained to lay down on cue, and we have a very closed environment where that horse feels comfortable, and a trainer comes in and asks the horse to lie down, and we're able to get these very intimate, nice shots. And of course, the horse is not sick. It's a very healthy horse, it's comfortable, and it feels like it can do the things it needs to do. Now, on the other hand, when a horse is agitated, or pawing, or rearing, or bucking, or any of those things, those are also trained um, horses that come in for those specific moments. So we have fabulous horse trainers, but Nikki Flunder is one of my favorites. <laughs> and she has a very talented team of horse stars and they're trained on cue. She will say paw and the horse will strike out or she'll say rear and the horse rears up. And a lot of things can be added in post as well to make it more dramatic. So what I mean by that is if a horse is striking out and you hear a squeal or a snort or things like that, the horse isn't actually doing that on the day. They're just doing the action. And then our team after the fact puts in sound effects that makes it seem more dramatic. So basically it's an entire crew that comes together to create these scenes and adds a little bit at a time and through a series of shots and sound effects and amazing horses, then you get Heartland. Sharon from Illinois in the United States of America asks, have any of your family members been in an episode of Heartland? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing, sis? What does it look like? I'm fixing your horse. Who says Scout needs fixing? Me. I've been watching you guys rodeo every weekend. And we've been doing pretty darn good. Yeah, well, pretty darn good won't cut it down south. So I'll make you a deal. Oh, yeah? What might that be? Uh, I am overwhelmingly proud. Uh, the girls know this. Um, we shot an episode um, 
in season 13, where we saw a glimpse of Jack as a young man. And that was played by my son, Shay. And uh, I thought he, uh, I thought he was everything Jack was supposed to be back at that age. And uh, I couldn't be more proud. And uh, He did a great job. Yeah, I thought he did too. <laughs> and he kind of looks like you. Yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> Of course, yeah. Um, anyways, no, that was a very proud moment for our family, and uh, thanks for asking that. Uh, here's a question for you, Michelle. Johanna from Germany asks, I know that you directed three episodes of CBC's Hudson. Have you also directed any episodes of Heartland? Hi, Johanna. Thank you for asking. Um, yes, I love directing on Hudson. That was an amazing opportunity, and I encourage you all to check it out on the GEM streaming app. But uh, this past season, I was lucky enough to get to direct an episode of Heartland, episode nine, Find Me in the Dark. So um, it was an amazing opportunity, and I was just so happy to get to work with these incredible actors. Um, and it was something I'd been wanting to do for a long time. So I was so thankful for that opportunity. And we're so happy to have you. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question for you, Amber. Yes. This one is from Bolu from the UK. And they ask, when working with horses, are the bonds you have with them just in the show, or do you get to know the horses in real life? That's a great question, because we were able to meet some of the horses on Heartland earlier in the segment, and I think that the people who have been around horses in their life know the incredible bond you can have with these amazing creatures. And for me, I've been working with the horse who plays Spartan, his name is Stormy, for 14 years now. So I don't think you could walk away without forming some kind of a bond. I mean, we work so closely together in all of these scenes. And there was a moment in time, it happened a couple years ago, when we found out that Stormy, the horse who plays Spartan, was developing arthritis and he wasn't going to be able to do a lot of the things required anymore on the show. And I was really sad. Not just Amy on the show, but Amber was really sad because this is a horse that has spent my entire Heartland experience with me. And so I went to the writers and I said, you know, can we actually create a story about this? Because this is real. This is something that is actually happening to this horse in real life. Can we make it a story so that the fans can go on this journey with me, Amber, and my character of Amy and see how this actually does impact a family mm -hmm. and so we've been able to go on that journey and luckily Stormy doesn't have to be retired because now his workload is less we don't have to see him go through many um, you know extracurriculars that we're gonna put a lot of stress on his body so Stormy's still here we were just doing photo shoots with him this morning and uh, and I think it was a it was a very nice moment in Heartland as well okay Sean Kyle from Wisconsin asks are you, Sean, as much of a badass grandpa in real life <laughs> as you portray on the show? <laughs> also, what's your favorite thing to do when you're not working? Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> badass G Daddy J. That's what yeah. we say, yeah, G Daddy. <laughs> um, in my personal <laughs> life, in my real life, I, I am not uh, a grandpa uh, yet, anyway. Um, Perhaps uh, I have something to strive for when I do become a, a, a grandfather in my, in, my, in my personal life. As for uh, what I do when I'm not at work, uh, I've got a couple of things that I really enjoy doing. I play a ton of hockey and uh, I uh, noodle around on the guitar whenever I have a chance. And uh, so those kinds of things are my, it's, it's my yoga, it's my, uh, it's my zen, I guess. So, Renee from Lethbridge asks, the women of Heartland show such wonderful female empowerment in the Western lifestyle. Do any of you have a favorite scene where you felt this? I love that this is so strongly represented throughout the show. Let's go rodeo queens. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Renee. Um, I think we should both answer this yeah. one. Amber, um, it is definitely a show with a lot of strong women and a lot of complicated women mm -hmm. um, and uh, in terms of the Western lifestyle specifically I'll let Amber speak to that <laughs> but I think we've definitely seen Lou you know strive for what she wants in her career we've seen her trying to find a really 
a balance between career and family. And of course this year she's mayor. So she's, you know, she goes for what she wants and she's also not perfect. So she, we're showing a real complicated three-dimensional woman and that's what I like about playing Lou. I think that's so true. And for my character, we find Amy in a very vulnerable place. Mm -hmm. You know, she is this young girl, she has just lost her mother. It starts off our series with this young girl who really doesn't have that empowerment behind her. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love about being able to portray this character, is we see that growth, we see that change in her. And in my own life, I feel like your 20s are the time when you learn the most about yourself, you grow the most, and you really realize who it is you want to be in life. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to play a character that is basically going through that period in life is a very rewarding experience as an actor because you have to continually find that inner truth of that character and allow her to grow and change and find that empowering body inside and I think that that's really what my journey as Amy has been like mm -hmm. and the cool thing about Amy is she uses horses to do that mm -hmm. and she uses horses to find that inner truth and that strength and there's this beautiful balance of this character who not only is helping to heal troubled horses but allowing those horses to help heal her. So that's it for our very first ever virtual Heartland Fan Day. We hope you guys had as much fun as we did and that you enjoyed seeing behind the scenes, meeting the horses, getting a tour of the house. And thank you so much to everyone who submitted all your questions. So, Sean, after this whole day, do you get it now? Do you get what virtual is? Well, I did look it up. Okay. Virtual. Carried out, accessed, or stored by means of a computer, especially over a network. So... No. <laughs> we tried. <laughs> well, for all of you who were able to tune in virtually, we appreciate you spending some time with us. And it was fun for all of us to be able to show what we do behind the scenes. Now, you're not going to want to miss season 14 of Heartland that will be airing January 10th on CBC at 7 o'clock p.m. And I would like to say on behalf of the entire cast and crew that the three of us here it was a privilege to do this with you today. Thanks so much for joining us. Take care.